We thank you, Lord. We bless your holy name. We give you all the glory. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we give you all the honors. We adore you, might and everlasting Father. We thank you, O King of Glory. I want you to begin to share, begin to share this message. Begin to share it. Begin to invite your friends to be with us at this moment. Begin to invite your friends. Begin to invite your your group members. Share to your groups. And the Lord will bless you immensely. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Heavenly Father, we give you praise. We worship you a shant of days. We magnify your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Father Lord in heaven, we hand over this service unto you into your hands. And my Lord and my God, the Bible said that whatsoever that is handed over to you is safe and secure. Father, minister unto your people. Let the name of the Lord be glorified. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Uh, brothers, we want to continue. We want to continue with our message, Dry Bones Shall Rise Again. And today's topic is that God is willing. God is willing to help you. God is willing to turn things around in your life. God is willing to make things to happen in your life. And if you are willing, He is willing. If you are available, he is available. If you are ready, God is ready for you. And so, this morning I want to advise you to always, always open up unto God. So that God will see a reason to do something in your life. Because you must have a role to play in your miracles. You must have something to, to, to do. You must have something to I mean, to show that you are interested in the touch of God. You have to do something. You have to be involved in your miracles. You have to be involved in what God is about to do in your lives. You have to be involved. And if you get yourself involved, God will perfect His will in your lives. Praise the Lord. Let's go to the book of Luke chapter 5. I'm reading from verse 1. So it was as the multitude pressed about him or upon him to hear the word of God that he stood by the lake of Gennesaret and saw two sheep standing by the lake. But the fishermen had gone from them and were washing their nets. Jesus, who went about doing good and preaching the word of God, he went to a city called, he went to a lake called Lake, lake of Gennesaret. And when he got there, he saw people who were frustrated in their business. He saw people who were frustrated in their lives, who, who were frustrated all, all through the night. And this is where he met a man called Simon Peter. Praise the Lord. I don't know what you're passing through, but the Lord is coming your way. Jesus is coming your way this morning by the reason of this message. Jesus is on your doorstep, knocking at the door of your heart, that when you open up unto him, he will come and sup with you. He will come and turn things around in your life. I want you to open up unto Jesus this hour. I want you to open up and make yourself available for God to do something new in your life. He is able and willing to do it. He went to the city of Gennesaret and he went to the lakeside. We are men, we are fishing all through the night. We are businessmen, we are fishing all through the night. And the Bible said that when he got there, Many came around to hear the word of God. I want you to invite your brothers and your sisters 
to come and hear the word of God, even as we minister this morning. The word of God turns things around. The message of, the, of, 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 of Jesus Christ, the message of the gospel, turns things around in the lives of men who believe in him. And I know that you are a believer. I know that you believe in miracles. I know that you believe. And because you believe, God will visit you today. God will turn things around in your lives. Dry bones shall rise again. God is willing to turn every dryness in your life to begin to receive flesh, to begin to receive the glory of God. God can turn those dry situations, turn it around for good for you. Turn it around to be a blessing unto you. Praise the Lord. The Bible said that when he got to the lake, he met fishermen who had been fishing through the night, who were tired and they were ready to leave. The Bible said that they were washing their necks. They, 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 they were fed up already. They did not catch even one single fish. They didn't even catch a crayfish. They didn't even catch one prawn. Nothing at all. And so they were washing their nets. And this is a business that they invested a lot of money. They invested a lot of money in this business. To the extent that they had ships they were using to fish. And you can imagine, for the whole night, none of them caught a single fish. You can understand their frustration. You can understand their predicaments. And we can understand as well. And God understands as well. Praise the Lord. He understands what you are going through. He appreciates your patience. He appreciates your loyalty to his name. He appreciates your trust unto him. And so this morning, there's a good news for you. Things will turn around for good. Things will turn around. And the Bible said that he saw two boats standing by the lake. But the fishermen, they had gone out from them and they were washing their nets. They were winding up to call it a quits. They have been disappointed and mesmerized. They have been, they, 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 they have been failed by nature. Nature had failed them. Their prayers had failed them. Their knowledge of fishing had failed them. But Jesus appeared on the scene. As Jesus is going to appear in your case today. Jesus appeared on the scene. And things turned around. Things turned around. And it will turn around for you in the name of Jesus. Christ of Nazareth. The Bible said that then. He got into one of the boats, which was Simon's, and he asked Simon to put out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the multitudes from the boat. He stepped into the boat of a man whose name was Simon. I'm talking about Simon Peter, who became the disciple of Jesus Christ. After God has visited him, after Jesus' miracles touched him, after Jesus had used his boat, he presented his boat. You need to present yourself before God today. You need to surrender all unto him. He surrendered his boat to Christ for the message and for the, for the gospel. He surrendered. You need to surrender something. You need to surrender your knowledge. You need to surrender certain things so that God will see a reason to bless you. And Simon Peter trusted towards the land. And when he had stopped speaking, he said to Simon, launch out into the deep. And lay down your nets for a catch. Simon 
volunteered his boat. Even though he was frustrated throughout the night, though he was tired, though he was, he was disappointed, though he was angry, so to speak, that he could not catch anything throughout the night. After all the applications of his knowledge of fishing, after all the applications of his knowledge of oceanography, what chemical to use to attract fish, what to use to attract fish into the net. He did all this, but he caught nothing. He caught nothing. Despite those frustrations, when Jesus asked for his boat to be used to preach to the multitudes, Peter, maybe reluctantly, but at long last, he surrendered his boat to be used. Oh, how lucky was this Simon Peter on that day that Jesus spotted his boat and went in there. And the Bible said that there were two boats there. And there were other smaller boats, smaller fishermen, somewhere up there. Those fishermen, they were, they, 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 they were washing their nets as well. They were disappointed. They were messed up. By the weather, I don't know. By nature, I don't know. By the environment, I don't know. But then we are disappointed. And Jesus appeared in the scene. Jesus appeared and went to one man's boat. He went to Simon's boat. And when he got there, he asked Simon, please, can I use your boat? Can I use your boat, brother? Can you allow Jesus to use your boat? Can you allow Jesus to use you? To minister to people. Jesus needed the boat to minister to the multitudes. Can you allow Jesus to use something that you, you have. To minister to the people of God. To minister to the multitude. I see a lot of people and I hear a lot of people complain about tithes and offering. This is the only thing you contribute. So that the gospel can be preached. Without hindrance. And you are complaining. This man called Simon gave a whole ship, a whole boat to Jesus. I don't know what you can give, but when you give, Jesus will not pass you by. When you give, when you support the things of God, Jesus will not pass you by. He is always willing to help you. Why giving is important is, is for your case. To be treated with urgency. For your case to be treated with urgency. Giving attracts, attracts favor from God. When Simon Peter gave his boat, something happened in his life. And what happened to him did not happen to the other, to the other fishermen who were around. Because they did not give. They were just looking. They were even looking from far. They were mocking and saying, look at this man. After you have suffered through the night, you gave your boat to somebody to go to use it and preach. You gave your money to somebody. After you have worked hard, you are giving tithe, you are giving offering. Oh, many we are talking. Those fishermen we are talking. Like so many of you are talking today. And saying that pastors are just there collecting tithes and offering. Many were complaining on that day. Many fishermen were complaining on that day. I don't know why you are complaining. But try as much as possible to give a little. To the propagation of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Peter gave a boat. Not only boats. Peter abandoned all things and followed him. Can you give and follow Jesus? You cannot just give and go and sit down. Jesus cannot bless you and then you go and sit down. And say, I'm, I'm going to begin to enjoy it. When it happened to Peter, to Simon, he began to follow Jesus. Let me show you what happened. The Bible said that when Jesus asked Jesus to launch into the deep and lay down his nets for a catch, for a drought, 
And Simon answered and said to him in verse 5, Master, we have toiled all night and we caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I will lay down the net. Master, we have walked too hard through the night. We have toiled. Toiling means sweating. Walking with sweat. Master, as you are looking at me, I am tired. I toiled throughout the night. I lost energy. I lost steam throughout the night. I am tired. But because it is you, I understand and I have seen that you are a man of God. I have seen that you are a, 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 a champion of the gospel of God. Maybe he never knew who Jesus was. But he knew that as he was preaching, he understood that this is a man sent by God. He understood that Jesus was sent from God to visit him. And he said, because you are the one who said it, I am going to, I'm going to trust my net. I am going to cast my net into the deep. The Bible says that Peter said, Master, we have toiled all night and we caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word or at your command, I will lay down the net. And when they had done this, they caught a great number of fish and their net began to break. The Bible said that when Peter launched, when Peter threw the net into the right side of the sea, where Jesus directed him to throw the net, when he threw the net, not knowing that as Jesus stretched his hand, stretched his hand towards the, to the side of the sea, all the fishes in the river began to gather in that place. All the, the big, big fishes began to gather at that spot. The word of God magnetized the fish, magnetized words, close to where Peter was asked to launch. And Peter launched out into the right place. And they enclosed a great multitude of fishes, great number of fishes. And their net began to break. And so they signaled, they called to their partners at the other side that we are watching and mocking and laughing and saying, this man is crazy. How can you give your boat to that man to preach? Those people who we are mocking, they invited them to help them to celebrate their success. And Peter began to invite their, his partner. They began to invite their partners to come and help them praise the Lord. To come and help them praise the Lord. To come and help them celebrate Jesus. To come and help them celebrate success. And so they signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats. Ah, They used their own boats as well. They filled both boats. So that they began to sink. Hallelujah. Miracle that 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 passed all understanding. Miracle that no man can explain. A miracle is, is an act of God that beyond that is beyond human comprehension, that is beyond human reasoning. That is a miracle. A miracle is an act of God that scientists cannot understand. That scientists cannot explain. No matter how they research, they will not be able to explain it. And so, when they began to load the fishes, and the fishes began to cause the ships to sink, the boats began to sink, <laughs> and they began to they began to think and say, "What is going on? What is going on?" And when Simon Peter saw it. He fell down at Jesus' knees. <laughs> he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. I now know that there is 
something here. I now understand that I am a sinner. I have not done the right thing. I have not given anything. That is why I have not caught anything. I have not given out my boat. I have not even given out my money. I have not even given out my time. Oh, I am a sinner. I have sinned against you. Oh, my Lord. Please, can you depart from me? Because my sins are always before me. I remember that there was a time. I was supposed to, to, to sponsor the things of God. I had money, but I couldn't. I didn't support the things of God. I didn't even give offering. I didn't even pay tithes. Even though they preached about tithes, I did not even pay tithes. Because I thought they were going to eat the money. Now that I gave you this boat, look at what, what has happened. You mean that there were fishes in this water and we we, we toiled all through the night. We could not get a single fish. Oh, my Lord. I know I am a sinner now. Please depart from me. I am a sinner. I am a sinful man. Depart from me, oh God. Depart from me. Oh, my Lord. And Jesus said, no. I will not just depart from you. I came to visit you. Because I know that your, 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 your time has come. Brother, sister, your time has come. Your moment has come. Your day has broken. I am telling you the truth. If you are willing and able to give a little for the propagation of the gospel of Jesus Christ, you will see things turn around. You will see impossibilities become impossible. Because God is willing. He is waiting for you to do something. He is waiting for you to do something. Oh my God. Verse 9. For he and all who were with him were astonished. Peter and all those, his partners, they were astonished. They were surprised at the catch of fish which they had taken. And so also were James and John, the two sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. They were all surprised. They were all taken aback. They were all astonished. They were all mesmerized. Their mental capacity could not contain this one. Their knowledge of fishing could not contain this one. And Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. Do not condemn yourself yet. From now, something great will begin to happen. Something great will begin to happen. From now on, you will begin to catch men. You will not only catch fish, you will also catch men for the kingdom. You will catch men for the kingdom of God. You will catch wealth as well. As you catch men to the kingdom of God, you have, we have used your boat to preach the word. And many have been saved because of using your boat. Therefore, I am promoting you. I am taking you to the next level. This is what Jesus told Simon. And Simon said, can this be possible? Even as you are standing and watching, even as you are sitting and watching, even as you are, you, you, you are ruminating in your mind, what is this guy talking about? All these hungry pastors, they are looking for our money. They are looking for tithe and offering from us. Let me tell you, with your tithe or without your tithe, with your offering or without your offering, the gospel of Jesus Christ must be preached abroad. It must be preached to the utmost part of this world. And so do not just worry yourself. Keep your money. Keep your wealth. Keep your boat. Keep everything. But let me advise you, it will pay you better if you play a role in the propagation of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Peter played a role by giving his boat and also joining Jesus to catch men, to fish men for the kingdom of God. There are opportunities where you are today to contribute to the progress of the gospel of Jesus Christ. If you cannot preach 
as a pastor. You can preach as an evangelist. You can do one thing or the other. If you have money, you can support financially for the purchase of equipment. If you see the current situation has made churches to go online and equipments are needed. Equipments are needed. Even as I'm speaking to you, I'm just using one small equipment, small phone. I don't even have a big phone, a better phone to use to transmit this message to the people of God. But if I have a better equipment, it will be better. It can reach a wider population to hear the word of God. And if you contribute to it, your life will never remain the same. Your life will never remain the same. For this purpose, and at this particular time, I want to thank those who have been supporting this ministry, who have been paying their tithes, who have been giving offering to this ministry to help us to propagate the gospel of Jesus Christ. I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. The Lord will visit you as he visited Peter. The Lord will visit you as he visited Simon in his place of business. The Lord will visit you in your own place of business, in your own place of work, in whatever you lay your hand, the Lord will visit you. As you continue to support the things of God, the Lord will visit you. The Lord will visit you and visit your family. Transform your lives in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And you know what? Peter eventually became fisher of men. He became one of the disciples of Jesus Christ. He became one of the ark apostles. He became the head of the apostles. See, today the name of Peter is here all over the world. There is no place on the face of this earth where Peter's name is not here. There's no place. No place. No place. No place. And those who joined him, because James, James and John, the two sons of Zebedee, they joined the crusade. They joined. They they, they joined the, 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 the campaign. They joined Jesus' team to preach the gospel. They became Jesus' disciples as well. Until today, they are hearing their their names all over the world. We are hearing their names all over the world. Their names appeared in the book of life. May your name appear in the book of life because of the good works you do in the vineyard of God. May God visit you and visit your family. May God visit you and visit your generation in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And right from there, they moved on. They moved on. And they got to a place in verse 12, and it came to pass, or it happened, that when he was in a certain city, that behold, a man was full of leprosy. That behold, a man who was full of leprosy saw Jesus, and he fell on his face and implored him, saying, Lord, if you are willing, you can now make me clean. If you are willing, Lord, you can make me clean. I can now see. I can now see that if you are willing, you can turn my life around. You can turn things around in my life. And you know what Jesus said? If the man said to Jesus, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. And Jesus, then he put out his hand and touched him, saying, I am willing, brother. I am willing, my son. I am willing, sister. Be cleansed of your leprosy. Let that leper leave you now. Let that poverty leave you now. Let that sickness leave you now. Instantly, immediately, the leprosy left him. Hallelujah. When Peter joined the crusade, 
joined the movement, joined the mission of Christ. They got to a place and they saw a man who was full of leprosy. And the man saw Jesus and he ran to Jesus. He knelt down before Jesus. I said, Jesus, if you are willing, today will be a good day for me. Today will be a nice day for me. I don't know whether you are still at home and saying that God is not willing. I don't know your situation, but God knows your situation. And he is willing. He is willing to turn things around in your life. He is willing to make things to happen. He is willing to set you free from that captivity. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And Jesus told him, as usual, that is what he normally does. He told him, just go and report yourself to the priest. Report yourself to the pastor. Go to your pastor. And go and give an offering. Give an offering for your cleansing. Give an offering for your miracle. Don't just receive and go. Don't just receive and begin to complain. Go and give an offering. Those of you that say that Jesus doesn't talk of offering, he doesn't talk of tithe. It's not for you to sustain this miracle. Go to your priest. Go to your, your reverend father. Go to your pastor. Go to your prophet. And go and give an offering. For what has happened to you. Give that offering as a testimony to them. Just as Moses has commanded you. Go to the chief priest. Go to the priest. Go to the pastor. And give an offering. Don't just go. Go and give an offering. Go and let the people know what has happened to you. When you give that offering, it will be sealed. That leprosy will not come back again. That leprosy will not come back to your generation again. And some of you say, ah, I went to a church and I felt better. Some people went to church and they were healed. But it later came back. Why? Because they did not seal it with an offering. They, 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 they were complaining that pastors eat offering, pastors eat tithe. And Jesus asked this man, Go to your priest, go to your pastor, and give an offering, a testimony offering. Hey, why are you taking testimony offering? Hey, why are you taking this, this, this? Oh my God. Compare that offering with the leprosy. Compare that offering with what God has done for you. And he will do more. Do not allow the miracle of God to elude you. Do not allow people to talk you out of the grace of God. Because this month of May is a month of extravagant grace. Try and give. It may not be to me. It may not be to beautiful get assembly. But try and give for the propagation of the gospel of Jesus Christ. If you give to us, if you encourage us by giving us financially, by even buying equipment, buying stuff, cameras, buying even phones, if you cannot afford camera, you can even buy phone and give to us. We can use it. We will not be having all these all this, uh, frictions while ministering. We can buy good lights and put and minister to the people. We can buy so many equipment that will make our message to reach the people. That will make the message interesting for people to watch. People may not even watch some of our clips. Why? Because the video may not be sweet enough for, for their liking. It may not be clear enough for their liking. But I pray that as you watch and listen, the Lord will bless you. It is the substance that matters. It is the realm that matters, not the beauty of the, of the video. After all, when Jesus was preaching, there was no video. He had no microphone. He had no equipment. Praise the Lord. It's just because we are in 21st century. 
Amen. And they are trying to constrain us. They are trying to stop us from going to church. But God will help us in Jesus' name. And God will help you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And I want to take you again to, the, to, to verse 17. Now it happened again on a certain day as Jesus was teaching that there were Pharisees and teachers of the law sitting by and who had come out of every town of Galilee, Judea, and Jerusalem. And the power of the Lord was present to heal them. Pharisees, Sadducees, all kinds of people gathered to listen to Jesus. On a certain day, They were waiting for God to heal them. And God healed them. And among the people that gathered were, were some friends whose friend was, was sick. And these people, they did the unthinkable. <laughs> because the power of the Lord was present to heal them. Things were happening. And when they came, they came with a paralyzed man. And who they sought to bring into where Jesus was, to lay him there. They came with a paralyzed man, a man that was paralyzed, was bedridden. That man could not talk. He could not, he was more than, I don't know how I'm going to put it, more than incontinent. This guy was carried. Together with his bed. You can't lift him. You lift him, he will die. And so they lifted his bed together. And they brought it where Jesus was. And they tried to push this guy in. And there was no way. I'm talking about good friends. You say you are a child of God. How many people have you brought before Christ? To be touched. All what you do is, God, give me. God, I need husband. God, I need I need wife. God, I need money. God, God, me, 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 you, 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 your brothers, your friends are there suffering. You have not even gone to tell them, to help them to go to church where they can be saved. Some of them may not have transport. You can't even give them transport money to go to church. You have a car, you cannot even lift them. All you have, all, all those things that you have is just for you and your family. You better think. You better repent. Are you hearing me? Simon told Jesus, please depart from me, O Lord, for I am a sinner. How did he know that he was a sinner? In the past, he was not given anything for the propagation of the gospel. But the day he gave, Things changed in his business. Things changed in his life. And he realized that he had been a sinner. Not that he killed anybody. Not that he did anything. Just because he realized that giving is a way of service. And Jesus told him that you will not only give, I will make you fishers of men. How, why can't you even become a fisher of, of people around you? Bring them to Christ. Take them to church. Let their lives be transformed. And these guys brought this, this sick man. This paralyzed man. Hmm. Then behold. Men. Some men brought on a bed. A man who was paralyzed. And whom they sought to bring in. And lay before Jesus. And when they could not. Find how they could. How they could bring him in. Because of the crowd. They went up. <laughs> they climbed the roof of the house. They carried the bed. Climbed somebody's roof. They climbed the roof. Because the crowd. There was too much crowd. Pharisees. Or those who came to mock. Those who came to. 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 to, to uh, 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 record things. And go and talk. They were there. Sadducees. They could not allow these people to take this man in. And you know what they did? They climbed the roof of a tree. Because they knew that God is willing to heal. 
Because many people were being healed. And they knew that God is willing. And God is always willing to help. You have to do something. God is willing to help. Stop helping yourself. You will help yourself by, by taking your case to Christ. Taking your problems to God. And God will settle it. And they began, they, they climbed the roof and they removed the zinc. They removed the, the, the roofing sheet. Removed the ceiling. And they lowered this man down to where Jesus was. Hey! And Jesus said this one is one of the greatest faiths. He has ever witnessed. My God. And when they could not find any way to bring him in, because of the crowd, they went up onto the rooftop and they let him down with his bed through the tiling into the mist before Jesus. And when Jesus saw their faith, he said to him, Man, instantly your sins are forgiven you, number one. <laughs> your sins are forgiven you. Your sins have been blotted away by your faith. You see how faith can remove sin. And once sin gives way, a miracle comes in. He forgave Simon his sins even before he asked for his boat. My God. And you know, those guys standing by, the scribes, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, they began to reason in their hearts, who is this man who speaks blasphemies? And who can forgive sins if not God only? And Jesus perceived their thoughts. Jesus understood that they were thinking something. And he spoke out and he answered them and said to them, Why are you reasoning in your hearts in this manner? Which one is easier? To say your sins are forgiven you or to say rise up and walk? But that you may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins. And that is why I pronounce it. That the sins of this man is forgiving him. Now it is about time for me to command him to go. To command him to be healed. And so if you want to go and hug Transformer. You can go and hug Transformer. If you are annoyed at what God is doing here. You can go and hug Transformer. Hey, but that you may know that the Son of Man has power on this earth to forgive sins. And so he said to the man who was paralyzed, I say unto you, arise now, take up your bed and go to your house. Nobody can challenge you. God is no respecter of persons. Take up your bed, man. You could not walk, but you are going to walk now. Go and walk. Go and enjoy yourself. These are your friends that brought you here. They have done a good job. Now, receive your healing and go. Right where you are watching today. I command your situations to leave you now. I command that sickness to go in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I command you to be healed right now. Receive your healing in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Receive your deliverance in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. The Bible said that whomsoever the Lord sets free is free indeed. You are free from today in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. He that went to the cross of Calvary and said it is finished. Your problems are finished. Your predicaments are gone. They have expired in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And God is willing to turn this around in your life. Dry bones disappear from your life now. I command every dryness. Dryness in your finances to disappear. Dryness in your marriage to disappear. Dryness in your womb to disappear. Dryness in your place of work to disappear. 
From today, promotion is your portion. From today, that which you are believing God for, you shall receive it. You shall, you, you shall see it. You will testify. Only find a way to support the things of God. To seal your miracles. To allow the miracle to begin to flow. To begin to flow so that it will not stop. Receive it and be blessed. This week you are blessed. This week, this month you are blessed. In the name of Jesus, cut off nothing. You are blessed in the morning. You are blessed in the afternoon. You are blessed in the night. Even when you are sleeping, the Lord will visit you. As he visited Simon Peter at his place of work, at his place of business, he will visit you in your place of work, in your place of business. Where you, where you, you dwell, the Lord will visit you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, receive it and be blessed. Receive it and be blessed. I bless your going out. I bless your coming in. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. So be it that this week you will testify. This week you will testify. You will testify. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Thank you, mighty God. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray.